and welcome back to the Cracking Bang YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving lead code problem 562, longest line of consecutive ones in a matrix. Before we get into it, I know you guys enjoy these Google questions, you watch them the most, so please leave a like and a comment on the video, it really helps me out with the channel. All right. Given an M by N binary matrix matrix, return the length of the longest line of consecutive ones in the matrix. And this line could be horizontal, vertical, diagonal, or anti-diagonal. So if we have a basic example here, let's look at all of the possible lines of ones we have, right? We have this line of ones. We also have this line of ones. We have this one. We could have this one and then this one, right? So we see that the longest one is obviously going to be four here because it's going to be this one. And just looking at this, it's really, really simple to figure out how to do it. But actually solving it is a bit more complex. The way that we're actually going to do this is with a simple depth first search. And what we're going to do is we're going to go from left to right over the array, uh, over our matrix here, uh, row by row, column by column. And essentially, the longest path starting at a given position is going to be what it's going to be one because obviously this is a one so we count it plus whatever the longest path up whatever the longest path to the left whatever the longest path here 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 or here is right it doesn't matter which direction we go in it's going to be the maximum of basically paths right so we'll say one plus the maximum of all the paths, right? And where paths can basically be up, down, left and right, or any of the diagonals, right? So we'll take the maximum of whatever that path length is, and then we'll add one to it because our current element is a one. And then that will be the longest path starting at that element. And essentially, um, we will just keep track of whatever the largest value we've seen. And at the end, we'll have our maximum. And you'll notice that, you know, let's kind of erase all of this and you're going to see kind of a recursive structure here obviously it's a depth first search so when we do this one right we're going to need to check the path here which is also going to need to check the path here and here and here so there's going to be a lot of duplicate um, path checking which is why we want to use a memoization dict to actually keep track of um, items. That way when we get here, we can actually check, is it inside of our dictionary? If it is, then we're good to go. We can just yank it and pull it out and use that value. Otherwise we have to compute it, but then we'll just store it in the memo dictionary. So this is basically just a simple depth first search with memoization. Now that we have the general intuition of how we wanna do it, coding it is relatively simple. So let's go now, now to the code editor and actually type this up. We're back in the code editor, let's write this up. The first thing that I wanna do is actually define a variable which is gonna keep track of all eight directions. Remember, we can move uh, in eight directions, up, down, left, right, and then we can go to each of the four diagonals. So let's actually define a variable to keep track of that for us because we're gonna need it for the solution. So we're gonna say self.directions. We're actually gonna use a dictionary here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna store the direction and we're also going to store how we actually move inside the matrix. So if we're going up, we're going to go, uh, we're going to, the column, uh, the, sorry, the row will decrease by one and the column will stay the same. When we go down, the row increases by one and the column stays the same. When we go left, whoops, when we go left, the uh, row stays the same and the column decreases by one. When we go right, um, the the row stays the same, the column increases by one. And then we can also go up and to the right, which is that diagonal, uh, which is going to be minus one, one. We can go up and to the left, we can, which will be minus one, minus one. We can go down and to the left, which will be one minus one. And then the final one is down into the right, which will be, whoops, this should be a colon here, down into the right, which should be what? Uh, one comma one. So that's our directions dictionary. And we're gonna use this later. You'll see why we typed it out. It's actually gonna make our code uh, a lot cleaner when we actually do the DFS function, but 
for now, let's just go forward. So we're gonna have a self.memo because remember we wanna use um, computations that we've already done to avoid us having to recalculate things because that would increase our time complexity a lot. And we also want a variable to keep track of our result, which is just gonna be zero in the beginning. Now what we need to do is we need to go row by row, column by column, and then for each basically tile in our matrix, we need to calculate uh, our results. So we're gonna say for row in range len uh, mat, and actually uh, I'm just gonna call it matrix because the solution I have um, that I typed up actually used matrix, so it's fine. Uh, whatever, you guys can just, okay, I'll, I'll just use mat for, to keep it simpler for you guys. Um, we're gonna say for column in range len mat zero, um, what we want to do now is if this current tile is a one, so we're going to say if matrix uh, row call, and remember it's either a zero or one. So if this exists, then it must be a one. Uh, and then we want to go in all four directions. And remember that we can't change direction midway. So the direction that we actually start is the direction that we need to keep going uh, for this to work. We can't just go left and then decide, actually, I want to go to the diagonal now, and then I want to go left. I want to, so we pick a direction and we go all the way as far as we can. And then we'll aggregate basically the maximum of going in all the directions and whatever is the best direction to go in, uh, from our point, that will be actually the best solution we want to do here. So we're going to say for, uh, direction, uh, in self dot directions. And remember if you do, for something in a um, dictionary, it will actually give you the keys. Um, so that's why we're able to just do direction. We don't actually have to call dot keys here. Uh, we can actually just access them directly by with a for loop. So what we want to do now is we want to say a result is going to be the maximum of whatever the current best result is and whatever calling self dot DFS on this matrix. Um, and I called it matrix here. Uh, Matt, we're going to pass in our current row, our current column. And we're also gonna pass the direction that we're going in because we need to keep track of that. Once this finishes, all we need to do is simply return our result and we are good to go. So now let's actually define the DFS function. Uh, so DFS, what does it take? It's gonna take a matrix, it's gonna take a row, a column, and a direction. What we wanna do now, uh, the first thing we wanna do is actually check, have we seen uh, this row, column, direction combination before? If we have, then we can reuse the result. So we're gonna say if row call direction is actually in self.memo, um, then we wanna return self.memo of row, call, and direction. Cool, so that's that. Now what we wanna do is we want to initialize our, basically our memo dictionary here. Um, how can I give myself some more space? Okay, perfect. Self.memo and we're gonna say row, column, direction, and this is initially gonna be set to zero. Now we're gonna check whether or not we're actually within the bounds of our array here. So we wanna make sure that uh, one, we haven't actually left the boundary of the array, and two, we're actually at a one, because if we're at a zero, then there's obviously nothing for us to do, we should just return zero, uh, which is what we've initialized uh, this, this coordinate to be. So we're going to essentially say, uh, let's check the bounds. So if our row is within the bounds, and the way we do this is if it's um, greater than or equal to zero and less than the length of matrix, and our column has to be within the bounds, which means it's greater than or equal to zero and less than the length of matrix zero. And we also wanna check that our current position, so matrix row column, uh, basically equals to a one. So as long as it's non-zero, we're good to go because there's only zeros and ones in our array. Now what we wanna do is we wanna figure out uh, how we need to change our row and column position um, based on you know the new direction we're going. So we're gonna say the row increment and the column increment is going to equal self.directions of whatever our direction is. So this is the reason why we actually use a dictionary so we can use the key uh, to actually get the increment. So this will be the row change and this will be the column change that we wanna do. So uh, as you can see, we can actually clean it up here. We don't need an if statement for every single direction. We can actually just pull it out of the dictionary and it makes our lives easier and this is much, much cleaner. So now what we wanna do is we wanna say that self.memo of row call um, direction is going to equal one plus whatever calling DFS on matrix row plus the row increment, column plus the column increment, and the direction will be. 
and we do one plus because remember our current item we just figured out uh, based on this statement here is a one so in the worst case it's at least one here so we need to do one plus whatever the best path going in the direction that we're going uh, will give us so that is the answer for that one so the last thing we want to do is simply return self.memo of row call and direction and we are good to go so that is actually it let's now run this make sure that i didn't make any stupid syntax mistake i actually wrote and here it should actually just be less than i don't know what the hell i was thinking anyway now that that's there uh we should be able to run this without issues yep and now we can submit it that is a pretty funny mistake but it happens i'm only human um now when we do it okay cool accepted so that is nice let us now think about the time and space complexity here so obviously for the time complexity we have to traverse the entire matrix uh, and we're going to have to do it in multiple directions. Uh, so, you know, the time complexity here is going to be O of M times N, uh, where M equals uh, number of rows, N equals uh, number of columns. So the amount of work we have to do is basically just bounded by how big our array is here. So that is that. Uh, space complexity wise, as you'll notice, we don't define any extra space. I mean, we have this self dot directions, but this is a constant space allocation because we know upfront that there's only going to be eight keys. Uh, so that doesn't really count. But uh, our space complexity here is actually going to be big O of M times N uh, because we have to account for um, the recursive stack space. So recursive uh, stack frames uh, from the DFS. So yeah, even though um actually no what am i talking about um it's big o of m times n because we have the memo dictionary sorry i'm off of it today but yeah um obviously self.memo could potentially store a value for every single tile in the um in the matrix so for that reason it's also going to be uh big o of m times n obviously there's a few multipliers here in terms of like the constant since we have eight directions that we need to keep track of so technically it would be like times eight but because we don't care about constants asymptotically uh, it's just going to be big o of m times n so yeah that is how you solve the question um yeah just make sure you don't make that stupid little syntax mistake here um and make sure you actually count the self top memo dict when you talk about your space complexity but like I said, I'm only human. Sometimes I make mistakes. It's fine. We caught the mistake. It's no big deal. So that is how you solve this question. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and a comment. Uh, it really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. If you want to see more content like this, then subscribe to the channel. If you're interested in joining a Discord community where we talk about all things Fang, things like interview prep, system design, uh, you can have your resume reviewed by me, you can ask for referrals by other community members. If that sounds something interesting to you, uh, then join the Discord. I'll leave a link in the description below, and I hope to see you there. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.